Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of The Extra Point. We got Tasha T. Sizzle holding it down in the Diara, representing those boys in blue that we used to idolize back in the 80s, the Georgetown no. Hoyas. This is Cayman Islands. Oh, Georgetown, Cayman Islands. Okay, double, uh, double entendre type deal. All right. All right. Well, you're looking good. She got on her soldier rag. And y'all, it's only fitting that she has on a soldier rag because uh, I'm about to go war. to war on that ass. She's about to go to war on that ass, and and I am dreading the next couple of segments. You will find out why in just a minute. But before we get into any of that, Tasha T. Sizzle, can you please do us the honor of giving a shout out to our sponsor? We are sponsored. Wait a minute. Before I shout her out, let me tell y'all how petty she is. Don't do that. No, uh-uh. This got to be said because I'm tired of it. I'm sick Don't of you it. speak ill of my niece, poo. Okay. Sometimes our time on this show, we a little late. We a lot of late, like today. Because I was out helping at a at a parasite clinic for stray dogs and cats. Okay. <laughs> so we was kind of late. She calls me. I said, why are you calling me? You know I'm doing the show, but y'all don't start till 1108 anyway. No, no, hold on. Before we go any further, and shouts out to Michael Haas, so checking in remotely from some cave in McKinney. Shouts out. Um, in Tasha's defense, she hit me up before showtime, Sasha, and told me to start without her, and I said, absolutely not. I told her I will sit here and wait until she gets the stuff done with the dogs because she's pet friendly. I'm pet friendly. I'm team dog. All day, every day. Shouts out to Bustin Hazel, chilling back in Nashville, Tennessee. So, Sasha, she was thinking of you. She did say Paul start without me, but I said, no, I'm going to go ahead and make it do what it do. Shouts out to a friend of the show, Miss Melanie Taylor, looking great in her profile picture. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, Tasha, look, we already know we're going to get stuck in one segment, so let's go ahead and, and, and start with the NFL before you put two feet in my you-know-what. Oh, I am dreading this. Oh, I hate to tell somebody they write in front of everybody. All right. <laughs> now, we're going to start in the NFL before we get to the, the gritty, gritty stuff. The NFL combine is going on right now. And the major story coming out of Indianapolis is Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter, who is basically universally known as a top candidate. Um, he was arrested this week. Uh, it was a warrant issue for his arrest. He was arrested this week. Uh, for his possible involvement in a fatal car crash that took the life of one of his teammates. Now, the long story short, it looks like they were speeding down the road in Georgia, um, going in excess of 100 miles per hour. The the uh, car, the, the SUV flipped over, they killed the young man, and Carter apparently fled the scene, came back and gave some false information to the police. Tasha, did I miss anything there? Well, he also killed a trainer. She was driving, and there was another teammate and another person in the back, but they survived. All and right, just the awesome. Trainer and the and the player are the ones that died. Awesome. Now the thing is, Tasha may not do no prep work, but she know her stuff. I could come to her with. <laughs> Thank you for bailing me out on that one. Now, on a serious note, let's talk how this affects this upcoming draft. Tasha, do you think this is going to affect his draft stock? Yes, because people have dropped for less. Look, uh, again, we uh, we talk about this. We don't talk about it often, but Peter Warwick lost to Heisman and, dra you know, draft stock dropped because some girl decided to hook him and Lavernius Coles up with some polo back at the Dillards back in the day out there in Tallahassee. Right. And uh, another player that hits a little closer to home to both of us is one Jeffrey Simmons. He was the top defensive player in the whole draft, was projected to go in the top five. He fell all the way to 19 to Tennessee because of an off-the-field incident that I came mean, to light. Now, his off-the-field and stuff, I mean, his stuff did happen, and that was during his recruiting, uh, which he did end up choosing Mississippi State, Klanga Klanga. That kind of happened before the recruiting when he was uh, allegedly defending a family member and he assaulted a female. But you can also go back, like I said, people have done for less. They can say all they want to. I know Michael Sam's dropped in that draft because he decided to come out as being gay. And he so, kissed a man in the mouth, and it wasn't 2023. Right. I mean, he the world wasn't go, ready for that. How do you go from being SEC player of the year to being drafted 200 something overall? And that's unheard of. He was the first ever SEC player of the year to not be drafted in the, in the first round. 
SEC player of the year that the NFL had to make a call to one Jeff Fisher, who was doing the hard knocks that year for them to pick him up so they could save face and not have to deal with the, the letters. I'm going to just call it the letters. So to answer your question, yes, because people have dropped for for less. All right. So, Tasha, let me put you in, into, in the front office. You have a top five, top six pick. Are you still going to take Jalen Carter? Because from a talent perspective, he's a can't-miss prospect. But now we have this thing that's lingering, and you know there's going to be more litigation to come. Do you still take a chance on him in the top five? And that's the issue. I don't want to take that chance by giving him money and losing a draft pick. That's the thing, losing the draft pick, because this is going to be stretched out over time. Over it's time, like yes. Like something's happening, and then they're going to go to court next week. This is going to be stretched out. So right. then you pay this guy this money, something happens, he has to do jail time. But, you know, they could put a clause in there that says, you know, if this happens, you, you know, we get our money back, but you still have lost that pick. Right. And in that high, there's a plethora of players that you can take with no yes. off the field issues and, and you won't have to worry about that clause. And, and the thing is, I'm glad that you said that, Tasha. Keep your eyes out on his contract negotiations with whoever he gets signed by, because I'm sure we're going to be circling back to that a la uh, your boy out in Arizona who had the calls in that he had to study and get off the damn call of duty, uh, Mr. Kyler Murray. So we know the NFL owners could be petty when it comes to negotiating to make sure that they protect their investment. I get that. Um, if you're Tennessee, let's say, and you already shop out the Dennett Can aisle, is this a primary candidate for you if he does fall to something like 10 or 11 where they have the pick at number 11? I still... <sighs> Again, it's all it's all hey Miss Hayes, hey Mama Hastings, it's all Mama about, Hastings in the house. It's all about that. I mean, draft picks, especially first round draft picks, man, those are valuable picks. And you know, yes. I mean, you can have the first one through three and still get a lemon. So, you know, then you taking the risk of, you know, going down to eleven and using that valuable draft position. Right. I don't I mean, I hate that it had to come out in the way the Georgia uh uh police did it. Right. Uh was booty, you know, they could right. let him finish the combine and get back to Athens or wherever he was staying. Right. Yeah, come on, let's handle this. But right. Right. It's gonna be fascinating to see what happens with him. And with there's only a couple of quarterbacks that's there for the taking in the top five. So somebody hopefully, and I'm just saying hopefully because I'm always trying to, to see the silver lining in these type of deals that he, that he will do a Jeffrey Simmons, get into the league, keep his nose clean make a couple of Pro Bowls and get his money on the re-up on his second contract. Well, but you're we talking about the difference between assault right. and death. Right. Again, right. let me throw somebody else in there. Randy Moss. Right. Randy Moss could have been a Titan. Randy Moss could have been a Thanks a lot, Tasha. Well, I'm already going to have a hard enough show to get through today, and you want to bring that back up. I mean, I even go back to, do you know Randy Moss – and Peter Warwick were both red shirt freshmen at Florida State. Can you imagine? <laughs> both of them had been on the field at the same time. Right. <laughs> right. But again, you know, you had off the field issues when it came to Randy Moss, who, in my opinion, is the second, top three, arguably second best wide receiver ever in the NFL. He's number two in my book behind, behind the GOAT, Jerry Rice. You know, he dropped because of some, uh, you know, off the field issues. And I'm glad you brought up Randy Moss because the the, the Titans, the Cowboys, they never they, they never got over that as far as replacing somebody with that caliber of talent at the wide receiver position. Look at Dallas in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Look at the Titans. Even though the Titans had success, who would have traded um, Kevin Dyson for Randy Moss on that 99-2000 team? Those and are a couple those, of Super Bowls. The Cowboys did not have a viable receiver at that time. Can you imagine? Even with Made a Glass, who was the quarterback? No, Quincy Carter. Mm, no, now. No, we don't, I don't know. If we want to call and Moss on the same team. That would have been sponsored by that Doja. <laughs> All right. Now, speaking of the Titans, now your your former GM, Mr. Rand Carthon from the 49ers, is now with the Titans. He made headlines this week. He basically came out at the combine and said that Ryan Tannehill. It's going to be Tennessee's quarterback this year. Do you agree? You're shaking your head. No, you do not agree, huh? It was so close to the end of Black History Month. It was only <laughs> Brother, did you have to ruin Black History Month by making these bonehead-ass decisions 
by keeping a Ryan Tant. Tasha, I don't know how to feel about it. Help me out. Help me work through my feelings on this. Because on one hand, we know that the championship window from 2019 has closed on the Titans. That is, that they missed that window when they when Tannehill botched the game against Cincinnati. They were the number one seed. The, the, team, the other teams were in transition, and they had beat the Rams, who won the Super Bowl that year, earlier that year with no Derrick Henry. So they they botched that. Now we're in that uh, – you saw what they look like without Tannehill. I don't know. What, like, like what, what do we do? I mean, they looked more effective, and the offense was actually moving better without Tannehill. Or, That's I, an I, indictment. I mean, it is. And I also say – they probably felt like they had a little bit more to play for. So maybe they were out playing a little hard. But if you're the number one seed and you feel like you ain't got nothing to play for, right. that ain't got nothing to do with the rest of your team. That's your quarterback. Right. And he, and he cost them that game. Uh, three crucial critical interceptions and a three-point loss on the last uh, play of the game that preceded with you throwing an uh, interception that just killed the Titans right there late in, the, in that final drive. Um is this a Rand Carthon decision or is this a Mike Mc, uh, a Mike Vrabel decision in your opinion? I mean, I would have to say more of a Vrabel decision. I was thinking and, that. You know, we're going to go back to this too. You know, the black man still don't get a lot of respect when it comes to them being a higher up. Look how they did, um, oh, what's the brother's name uh, in Toronto? The, the Raptors, when they wouldn't let him on. Oh, the- yeah. Uh, a jury, yeah. Massage yeah. jury, yes. So I don't think a lot of times we get a lot of respect when we do get those positions because in the back of some of people's mind, they still have that inferiority thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, so he's just a front man, but there's somebody pulling the strings really behind closed doors. Right. And Rabel seemed to not have an issue with Tannehill being in there. He sure didn't. And he doesn't have an issue with the three yards and the cloud of dust. BS that's been antiquated since the smash and dash team in 2008. Because, you know, <laughs> because you're the coach, you sit down, you talk to your GM, you guys come together. Hey, you know, Tannehill's been out there. I'm really not keen on Tannehill. What can we do? What right. do you think we should do? That's how those conversations go. I think Vrabel is going in there saying, Hey, I think Tannehill still got it in him. I'm not really sold on Malik. What you talking about, Willis? And we right. got the scientists here. Right. Right. You know, hey, he's a good kid, but hey, you know, I don't know. Right. Um, should the Titans just rip the band-aid off and blow this whole thing up? Do you think maybe he could be kept on for now because he could be used as trade bait for the draft? Does I he mean, have any trade value, Tannehill? And that's the thing. Someone's always looking for a banged up <laughs> run of the mill, middle of the road type ass QB white that can get out there and you know, do he's going to he's going to say the right things. He's not going to push the envelope. He's, he's just happy to be there. He's going to go along to get along. Right now. I don't even know if you want to keep him on your rock because a rookie quarterback is not what the Titans need right now. Uh, because you're going to run into the same issues unless you just happen to get one of these superstars like a, a, a Josh Allen, like a, a Patrick Mahomes. Well, wait a minute. You guys didn't draft a superstar. You took Mr. Irrelevant and went to the NFC Championship game. But, I mean, come on. Come on. That's an anomaly. How often does something like that really occur? It it, it doesn't. That Like, that was Brock Purdy coming. I mean, look at Kaepernick. Kaepernick did the same thing when he came in and took over for Alex Smith. He came in and just... Just show what he could. Everybody that y'all have to come in does that. Garoppolo did that. We took you to a Super Bowl. Now, we can't take that away from him. Steve Young did it, you, you know, because that's then that was the thing. They kept saying you can't Jeff Garcia, the list goes on and on with the 49ers. Yeah, yeah Jeff Garcia, we, we didn't get to a Super Bowl, but we were still, you know. He made the catch. Yeah. He all caught that ball. He caught that ball from Jeff Garcia, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't even know if you if you hold a space for a Teddy Hill. Because he's, he's already said he's not going to train, help train up the new ones. Right. He made that very clear last year. And it showed because he wasn't ready. No, Mr. Glenn checking in says, I would blow it up having one with Tannehill or Henry, go young and rebuild. He's right, but that frightens me because of the pre-Marcus Mariota years when we were going 2-13, and 3-13, and 13, that type of stuff. At this point, you're 
only winning because of the conference that you're in. That's, that's true. My, that's, that's my true. opinion. That's true. Well no, 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 that's true. That's true. You might as well go out there like Jacksonville did, get you a sunshine type player and build from the bottom. Jacksonville went from two and what? Two and 14 last year to, to the playoffs. To seven and, 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 and won a playoff game, actually. Yeah. Right, right. So that's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully – that there's another shoe that's going to drop that maybe some sucker team like uh, Atlanta or, or Carolina takes I them mean, off our hands. We've already gotten rid of Taylor Lewan, so it shows that they're that they are willing to make some moves. Right. They need off. They need offense. That's basically what they need. They need a few, you know, maybe little cornerbacks or something here and right. there. But they they need a line and they need a quarterback. Pay Jeffrey and build around that offense, and then let's keep this thing moving because it's going to be a long season in Nashville either way you look at it. With Tannehill, with with Malik, with whoever, um, it could be a long, long either season. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you're entitled to. <laughs> right. All right. Now, speaking of entitlement, nice segue, Tasha T. Sizzle. Ladies and gentlemen, her do-rag is so apropos because we've been going to war all week in the, in the inbox over my boy, Mr. Ja, what the hell are you doing, Morant? Now, this week hadn't been the best week for him. Stop it, Tasha. Let me set the stage. This week hadn't been the best week for him. There's been more news of allegations of, of improprieties about him and his damn camp. Now, this one has been released by the Washington Post on Wednesday, I believe, to where there was an incident in a Memphis mall where the mama was had gotten into it with the with the finish line guy, called her son. He brought nine people with him. Let's just say he gooned up, went down there, and then there was an altercation with the uh, mall uh, police or the mall security in the parking lot. Now that, oh, now, that led to me and Tasha going back and forth about his future, Josh's future, and what the hell that he's doing. And then today, of all days, right before we go live, we see an Instagram uh, live uh, caption of John Morant at a strip club with one of those Jasmine guy guns. <laughs> Remember Eddie Murphy looked at that little gun and he kissed it on. <laughs> oh, so cute. He, got a little gun. he on that live with a book, one of them Jasmine guy Harlem night guns. That's embarrassing off, off the rip. If you're a gangster, you need to have a Luger or something. I digress. Tasha, it's time to bring out Aunt Sizzle again. I need you to talk to, to my nephew, Ja. Tasha, the floor is yours. Ninja, if you don't sit your MF ass down. No, Tasha. No, 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 no. No, don't make me chime in because I've been defending Ja Morant all week and now I got egg yolk all over my face because that was embarrassing. You're on a live with a gun. What are you what are you trying to do? Like, like they said on, on one of the memes. John Moran is the first player in NBA history that makes his way out the NBA to the hood. To the hood. That's Who what they does say. that? And I why mean, are you doing that? A lot of you guys don't go on Twitter, but as I went on Twitter, he is the number one trending topic on the Twitter. That's never a good thing. It is. If you see now, I'm going to pull it back up. Number one, John Moran. That's the number one trending. This is my thing. And one of my friends from Memphis, shout out to Steve, he's out there in Arizona now. He said the thing about these allegations, even if they are true, let's go back to the mall security guy. Right. You run up on the mall security guy, okay, you get the best of him. You don't know who, who his people are. And in, in a city like Memphis, no less. Right. You don't know who that who that man's people are. They don't give a damn. If they really about that life, they don't give a damn about no John Moran. They shot young Dolph in front of a damn cookie store. You right. really think they give a damn right. about a John Moran? In broad daylight. <laughs> On a beautiful sunny day. So, it's okay. Again, all of these things are allegations, but what I try to tell our host over here, where there's smoke, there's fire. And that always, that additive always holds true. Now, the thing with the 17-year-old, if you guys are not familiar, they had some sort of little fisticuffs. It was one of those things where you check the ball. Ja threw the ball at him to check. The boy threw the ball back. Right, like uh, New Jack City, check, G-Money. Check. Yeah. So when it was time for him to catch the ball, Ja missed the ball, and the ball hit him in the face. 
So he gets mad. He argues with the boys, tussles. Then his boys and them get up there. They tussle. And alleged, this is where the allegations come in. He goes in, didn't pull the gun, draw the gun on the boy, but he branched it. He showed him. That showing him means, okay, yeah, here you go. And, and now we don't have any reason not to believe that after the IG Live. Right. Now you don't have a reason not to believe. Then the incident with the mob. And that's mama, where you are 100% right. Keep going. I just had to mama, say that. Mama yeah. Rant needs to sit her ass down too. Right. You get into it with the dude at the finish line. Let me I'm finna call Ja and tell him. Because you know that he's going to escalate the issue. Right. If you right. know your son is 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 volatile or trying to show everybody he about that life, why would you even do that? Right. Y'all, people keep wanting to say, oh, he's young. He's young. Yeah, I get that. I said it. But that's when you sent out that tweet. Hey, Wolf Chase, hey, the, the, to the hash, to the um, at finish line and at Wolf Chase Mall, just to let y'all know, we ain't, we ain't bleeping with y'all no more because of what you did to my mom. Then you may want to go and say, yeah, y'all, let's go down here and talk to this dude. But then you go up and you get the, the mall security guy and not the person at finish line who actually did whatever they no, did. Shouts out to the mall security guy from keeping something from happening in finish line. Right. Right. Exactly. So my thing is, even if Ja had nothing to do with it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Even though Ja may have not had anything to do with it, what I tried to explain to Paul again, it is the fact that Ja Morant's name is attached to it. Right. All of right. this stuff happened last summer. This was right. 2022. Right. And this is all it's, stuff that I said yesterday, as a matter of fact. His name is attached to that. Ja is the the a year or two from being the face of the other of the league. He's so, a year or two from being a 30 for 30. Right. So you can't always say your entourage. And I told Paul this too yesterday. AI had an entourage and AI really wasn't doing a lot of the stuff. It was AI's entourage that right. was doing it. Right. Now, when you have a certain culture, you have a certain street life or whatever the life you live, AI was about that life. Y'all know he was from uh, Newport News, Virginia. He's always been about that life. Single parent, mom, whatever. You can't even say because Ja came from a two-parent home. I know a lot of people came from two-parent homes that ain't about shit. So you can't necessarily say that either. That's very true. So, and shows up to the Firebirds, Langston. <laughs> so um, with that being said, he needs to have a whole image. Whoever's in charge of him, who's ever pulling exactly, who's ever pulling his strings needs to tell him, hey, we need to do this. You go back, look, at, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give this man his props. And Paul, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get your prop ready when I say I'm gonna give him his props. Shout out to the king, the king, single parent mom, never knew his dad, or if he does, he ain't never put that man out there. Right. Same group of friends growing up, they was all hood. None of them was really just rich, silver spoon mouth type men. Right. Look Akron, at, Ohio is not the suburbs. Right. Look, look at them now. You don't see. Uh, the, uh, LeBron out here in no in no mess. Look at KD. KD, single parent mom, grew up in the hood. You know, going around back and forth. You know, um, uh, Mama Durant was struggling at a point to make sure you know her son could get what he needed. He had his coach die. What did he do? He wrote something on his shoe as a right. tribute to his coach. He didn't go out here and be like, "Yeah, whoever did this, we finna handle this." Right. And to Lexus' point, bringing up the Pro Cone Firebirds. Pearl Cone was littered with single parent homes and people Thank that grew you. up in the housing projects that Thank went on to be businessmen, doctors, professional athletes, the, or or they retire early and go move out of the country and go live on the beach. You know what I'm saying? Or, or move in Texas and follow their dreams. Good, solid people, parents, grandparents, good people that all came from a, what you would call a, dis a disadvantageous background. Right. So, John, what the hell are you doing? I mean, it's like, why are you trying to be hard? I, I would give up that street life for them millions and that name any day. Now, see, Shamika, Natasha said this yesterday in all caps. All eyes are always on you. So, Tasha, take your flowers there and smell them. You, you destroyed me in that, that argument because of what happened this morning. Yeah, and I, I owe you an apology. I wish I could go back and read. This man had me so when I said this man had me so mad at work. He told me to get it through my greasy skull and then put some gold. 
fall. Like I said, it, and I just told him, I said, it ain't no fixing you. Like it ain't no fixing you. He was so just like defending Ja. Oh, well, hey, damn it! I'm I'm trying to see the best in him because I'm a Grizzlies fan, and uh, and now it's almost like the parent when you see the child on tape steal the the stuff out the the store. You like, oh damn, that was my child. I you even know? told him he was like, well, you you being that person. Look what they did to AI. No, I'm not being that person. I'm being a realist, and everybody who knows me knows that I am a realist. Mike, I, I literally just said this right before we went on air. I said that he saw my comments and said, hold my beer. I literally told Tasha that before we went on air. Um, he embarrassed me, and damn you, Ja, I'm Team Luca. I mean, he should, he should be embarrassed himself. Like, what are you trying to prove? Even like, like I said, even though AI had a lot of questionable things that happened in his past, and even some that while he was still in the league, you never saw AI pulling out no pistols. You never saw AI doing anything else. Like, if those are your boys, your boys need... Oh, Shamika. Shamika, go on Twitter right now or go on Instagram right now and type in Ja Morant. You will see what we're talking about. And please do it right now. How long does this look? Look at that little bitty gun. <laughs> look at that. That gun ain't going to do nothing. Right, a mini pea shooter. <laughs> that Harlem Knights gun. Shouts out to Hood Hood Ratch TV. We do not own the rights, but shouts out to Hood. Right, Ratch we do not own the rights to that, but shouts out to Tasha T. Silver for being right on point to cue that up. Because this comes on the hill of a week long argument where I was defending Ja, and now I'm sitting here with Memphis Grizzlies piss all on my face, looking stupid. And let's not forget Tasha that you just went on the road and lost in Denver last night by 20 points on the road. You got a, a nasal fracture, but instead of going home and getting some rest for your game tonight in L.A., then you know they in L.A., right? They play the Clippers and the Lakers the next two games. You at the strip club with a little peak shooter. And right. That's right. Peel, peel, peel. So is T, with, is T with him? Yes, T is with him. And we're going to scroll back up to where they said T is being a friend and not a father. And that's part of the problem. The mom is not being a mom. She's being an instigator. Now, if my mom was really in trouble and she needed my help, I'm going to help her. But if she calls me to gaslight me to go and get myself in trouble when I'm the one that's bringing in all the money, because hey, mama, you hurt right. me and not helping me. It's it's his name on the line. I don't even know his mama damn first name. You know T because T always in the stuff trying to be seen. So it is it's all on him. Right. And Stephanie just was brought up a part that we never even talked about this week. You are somebody's father, John. Ja. Go Look, sit your. How many fathers Woo! out there? Think that they, it, it's not just Ja. You, you ha they don't care. They're trying to be seen. But this is not the way to get your likes and your follows. And, and, and getting the likes and follows yes. from who? And, and like I, you said, but it can happen within a good home. And that's I what I said, likes and him coming from a two-parent home. I know a lot of people from two-parent homes that, that just ain't worth a damn too. Right, right. And and and, and like, like Langston is somebody who we were just talking about that came, went to a school where everybody went to the projects and lived in, in below the what you would call the, uh, the standard mode of American living and Langston's just fine in his big old house with with the prince and, and his beautiful daughters doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you can't just – John, you ain't got no excuse. You don't embarrass me in front of Michigan Mike because Michigan Mike sat there and read all that. I told Mike, stay out of this, bro. Let me and Tasha fight this out. Tasha done hit me with the uppercut, the body blow. He <laughs> and then John just stomped on my I mean, neck. I really wish one day, guys, we can release the stuff that we say. Like – and Paul actually really had no rebuttal to what I was saying. He was just, no, 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 no. Your points were invalid. My points were very valid. What I said, no, this is why I, see, now we're going to take this, we're going to bring this out of the chat room now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I said. I said the Washington Post was from an incident that happened last July before everything came to light about everything that was going on with him currently after the kid incident and all and the Indiana Pacers incident. I said, let's see if he does something currently because we don't know if he's changed since that moment. 
Now, obviously, he hasn't because he just put out an Instagram live, and now I, I get it, and now I'm coming down hard on Ja. That's what I was saying. I was not defending. There were several times when I said I agree with you, Tasha. I just want to give the guy I'm credit. Thinking, you only said you agree with me twice, and that was towards the end when you knew you lost. No, ain't nobody no losing. Don't do that, Tasha. Well, I said, because here's what he says. No, no, Tasha, don't do that. Because if you open up the books, then everything is open for investigation. Then we gonna move on. Oh, you ain't that. My whole, my whole thing with Paul was, it doesn't matter if something happened to him when he was twelve. If he got arrested when he was twelve, any current thing that he does now that has John Morant's name on it is going to be brought up because it's Ja. It's a, but is it against the law, ladies and gentlemen, of the comment section? My fellow goons and goonettes that's watching right now, is it is it against the law for me to want the best for him going forward? That maybe he will figure it out and, and go on and have a great career? That I don't want to just brandish him to the to the grave Again, off a few that's mistakes. You, that's you with your glass half full mentality. I'm a glass half empty because you have to show me. And everything that he has shown me thus far shows me that he's not ready to handle this. I agree. On in front of the whole world, I agree he has not. And and this and that latest IG live just goes to prove that she up to today, Tasha has been right. I am hoping that right, Mike Object, you leading the witness, Tasha. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> bang your gavel, judge. Bang your gavel. <laughs> Remember that episode. Bang your gavel, judge. No, I'm right. Thank you, Steph. I'm rooting for you, John. He's only 22. We're rooting for him because we do. Like, I love his style of play. I love to watch Ja play. But all this other stuff, yeah, you can see. You're going gonna to be on the last yard if you keep on. You're going to be playing with, with, with uh, Larry and him down right. in the Memphis see, penal system. I mean, we all want you to be yourself. We're not saying, oh, you got this money, now you done changed. We're not saying that. But sometimes you have to level up, as Sierra said, you he knows to. this. He knows this. Come on now. Wait a minute. This isn't his first year in the league. He's not a rookie. This year obviously, four, damn it. Obviously, obviously he don't. Year four, so year three, you, when you was out here going, Yo, look, Yosemite, Sam right. on people. It, it's the bag, man. It's that bag. You think he think he young NBA young boy or whatever. These I don't want to sound like the old man crapping on the young rappers. But this look, now, nah, bro, this ain't you. Now, I don't forgave you, bro. John, listen, I don't forgave you. You was just being a kid. I don't forgave you, but from this point forward, I'm holding you to Tasha's standards. Like, Uncle Paul is ready to whoop your little ass because you're embarrassing your family name, you're embarrassing your grandmom and them, you're embarrassing the city of Memphis, and if you can embarrass the city of Memphis, you're really effing up. No disrespect to Memphis. But if you if you embarrassing the home of First 48 headquarters, then <laughs> you know you're messing up. Or end up in 201 just because you think you did. Come on, A Ball and MJG. Now, Stephanie, now, Stephanie's the second person to say she really thinks it's the daddy. Somebody is encouraging him. Not only encouraging Stephanie, enabling him. Enabling. Because Stephanie will be like, Paul, what you down there in Dallas doing? Sit your ass down. Do we need to come down there and snatch you up? Does my mama got to get on the FaceTime and cuss me out? And remind me of oh, how she used to wipe my dirty drawers and how where I came from and, and, and what I'm here to do on this earth. Right, Stephanie said, oh God, yeah, we're gonna we gonna duke it out. And you and y'all already know my sister cussed me out. I mean, that's just that's like telling you water's wet. Um, so let's <laughs> let's keep on. But Tasha, listen, everybody, shh. You were right. You were right. He ain't grown up yet. You were right. And now my stomach hurt and I want to go throw up in the car like the like the dogs did. <laughs> hey, Shit. I got my windows down. Windows rolled down. All right, let's go get to another another uh, NBA topic real quick. Draymond Green made a, 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 a comment that I never really thought about until he actually said it and made me start thinking. Um, right, and this is the, the mic drop. You're not finna fumble the bag. When Nike snatched that money from you, don't don't go on Instagram talking about the the racism and, and all of that. Just that's just chill. show what T said when he ran out to break up that fight with him and that seventeen boy. You gonna mess up? I, I mean, your good money. Right, right. Now, now T, y'all understand you 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 Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, whichever ones was the backup dancers. You that new addition guy. Just get the steps right. Quit trying to lead, sing, stand in the background. 
and keep your boy on track because he could be one of the greatest that ever does this in this game. On the floor, he's phenomenal. But I digress. Draymond Green made a comment, Tosh, and I want to get your opinion on this. He says this week on his podcast that European-born players do not get the same criticism as American-born players in the NBA when it comes to winning an NBA championship. And so I started thinking, because I know we had broached this subject maybe last season during the playoffs about the influx of great European talent and how they're starting to take over the MVPs and the top fives and all that good stuff. So I started thinking, when we start talking about which players really need an NBA title to submit their legacy or or we just put pressure on them, we come up with names like um, Russell Westbrook. CP3. CP3 is, is a big one. Kevin Durant got two titles, and that ain't enough for most people. We want him to win the title with me and Tasha on the wing and, and Mike playing the power forward, you know, for him to get his props as a true champion. It, it's not good enough that he won two and go to state and was the and was the two time finals MVP. That wasn't enough. We want him to go win with some bums. So and then you look at Russell Westbrook again. He won an MVP, averaging a triple double. The next three years he did it, and we were all young and oh well, we've seen him do that. But yet Nikola Jokic is on the verge of winning his third straight MVP by doing the same stat pattern that Westbrook did. And I don't hear anybody talking about he needs to get a championship when he was one and eight in the last two playoffs. Tasha, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think that Draymond has a point? As much as I hate Draymond Green, he's actually right on this. Because and as you were reading off of all of this, this just popped into my head. Steve Nash was the MVP twice. And he also got a head coaching job that he did not need. Or deserve. Or deserve. And yet they still want to put Steve Nash up on up on top. Now he's not, I mean, he's he's Canadian, but still he's nobody not, said that he should have won a championship. Right. No one said, oh, Steve Nash should have won a championship. Uh He's right. You know, the only one I know that took that, that got that criticism was Dirk. But Dirk also won a championship. But before that, the argument still wasn't Dirk needs to win. Right. Right. Now, Dirk, now Dirk I'm going to give Dirk, he's in the middle because we all know where his wife is from and he have to go plates. So people see him walking into the arena with that to go plate. He's going to get the same criticism as the right. Americans. He, married, he, he didn't marry him foo foo. You know what I'm saying? He can marry the Mary. <laughs> Let me stop. He, he married a sister. Dirk, Dirk, yeah. Dirk married a sister. Um, hold on. Mike, Mike checks in. He says, you know, when we got Dirk, we were like, he better win it for us, especially after losing to Miami. But, no. but it was after that, Mike. Before that, nobody was really saying, you know, if Dirk don't win, he ain't good. You know, he took a lot of criticism, especially for, especially for that. Yeah, and games. when you look at him against a KD, his one title was enough. One title wasn't enough for LeBron. One title wasn't enough for KD. You want to see Giannis do it again. You know what I'm saying? So uh, there's a point. But And the thing is, when I'm thinking about this, Tasha, I'm not even thinking race per se because the Stephen A. Smiths and, and all those people are the main ones who do this to the American players. Well, you even but you you just said a name, Giannis. Nobody said Giannis needed to win. Right. He's He's, he's European. He's from Greece. No one said Giannis needed to win a championship or he was going to be a bust. What if we were just turned on by the way he plays that excited us the way he played ball. Right. Right. And his one championship is good enough for everybody. They're like, all right, cool, cool. But right. if, he, if he never wins again, he's good. Hell, he got the Haslam's out there trying to pay three point four seven million for a part of the Bucks. Now, now let's go. Let's post this. Now he said uh, one's enough for me. For the King, though, I bring that up because he's trying to be MJ. First of all, Mike, if you are gonna start coming for the King, bring your ass on the set. Don't 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 be throwing no comment yeah, shade. Twitter thumbs now. Right. Don't don't put don't be Twitter fingers. Now now if you want to have that conversation. You need to zap on in here. I can send you the link. But he's not trying to be the king. I mean, trying to be MJ. He's trying to be LeBron James. They're on the field, on the court play, and off the court style are completely different. He ain't I mean, trying to be no MJ. Oh, oh, let's, let's stop. Let's stop. After Jordan, everyone who patented their game was trying to patent it after 
Jordan. Not saying now again, LeBron and uh Jordan have two LeBron different- is trying to be like magic, not Jordan. LeBron is just trying to win and get his paper. He at right. this point, I don't necessarily think he's trying to be like Jordan. But when he came out, everybody we said that came out was Jordan. Harold Miner. Oh, Jordan. Oh, my Vince God. Carter. Remember Harold Miner. <laughs> oh, my Vince God. Carter, dunks, dunks like Jordan. Uh, Kobe plays like Jordan. Uh, you right. know, we, we always hold Jordan up as the, what do you call it, the litmus paper. And, and, and for good reason. And he he earned that. But Jordan earned that. I'm not going to crap on Jordan today um, or any day. But he, he earned that. But but I do think that uh, the like, Draymond. Say the true king got jaundice eyes. Now, wait a minute. He do be on that yak. <laughs> he do be on that Krispy Kreme. His eyes do look a little golden. Okay. I'm just I'm just reporting the news. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, stop it, Mike. You're trying to get us. He just want to keep us fighting because he enjoyed that this week. Now, you know, ain't either one of us going to back down. As soon as one person posts something, you see the little dots going like, oh, shit. She got something ready for me. But we're going to digress. So, basically, we agree. Mike, I think he disagrees that that American-born players aren't held to a higher standard. That's what it sounds like he's saying. I mean, I I think they are because we say, oh, this is an American game, even though the guy who, who invented it, he was Canadian. No, don't bring that part up. But that ain't Europe. That's North America. Now, <laughs> now, one other question to you, Tasha, while we're speaking to Jokic, because he was really the catalyst for Draymond saying this. Three MVPs in a row? That puts you in, in rarefied air with one Larry Bird. And who else? There's only one other person that did and it. He's like, no, and he's nowhere near the caliber player Larry Bird is. Larry no, Bird no. won three championships in those in – those, uh, well, two championships Larry, in those three Larry years. Bird is in my, is, hey, Larry Bird is my top five, top ten. Larry Bird put that work in on you. What you said? We'll put that work in. All right, so I digress. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and Miss AP Coach, I don't see you in the chat. So make sure somebody run and tell her that after a long hiatus, it is time to bring back the Shut the Hell Up Award. All of our day ones, they know how we get down with the Shut the Hell Up Award, and it's it's time to go ahead and bring that back. And um, Tasha, you want me to go first? You want to go first? Oh, go ahead. My my shut the hell up award this week goes to you, mad rapping, old head '90s NBA players, namely Charles Barkley. All right, Charles Barkley and your '90s minions. I'm gonna need y'all to shut the hell up. We get it. The the it was a you the '90s. Y'all act like the '90s was was the only decade that ever played basketball. Every time you find a 90s player with a microphone in front of them, they're hating on today's game. Oh, they, they shouldn't be make, doing load management. Oh, the game with the all-star game was much better when we played. All oh, the dunk contest was much better. Yeah, we get it. The yeah, dunk contest cool. was better in the 90s. The all-star game was better in the 90s. These players have technology now. They have analytics to take care of their bodies, to make sure that they play longer. It is not these players' fault that Scotty Pippen played 12 years making $12,000 a year and he was the second best player in the, in the world. It's not John's fault. It's not Luca's fault that they make it $250 million after four years and Scotty had to threaten to retire to get about a meal. It's not a, it's not their fault. Charles, you, look, shut the hell up. Look, we get it. You don't hear nobody from the 80s talking bad about today's game. It's only the 90s players And Tasha, I'm going to close with this. You know the only two people who you'd never hear talk about today's game in a negative light? One, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, and one, Hakeem Olajuwon. You want to know why? They won titles in the 90s. All you other naysayers of today's game, you didn't even win in the 90s. You didn't even win. Charles, Jordan took two breaks and you couldn't get it done. So now you got you got a word in due season for all these new players, and you couldn't even get it done when Mike retired twice. Then Mike put them hands on you in 93 when you was the MVP and had home court advantage. Mike knocked you out in six games. So shut the hell up. Shut up about LeBron. Shut up about KD and his beady head. Shut up about all of them. You didn't have to say that. I didn't have to say that. That was awful. So, Paul, you shut the hell up on that. 
Shut the hell up, Charles Barkley, and you 90s rapping old heads. All right, Tasha, you up. My shut the hell up was actually going to go to you, but since you came... <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it on me on the first go-round. So actually, to be honest, I'm pointing inward on this other shut the hell up, and that the shut the hell up award goes to me. You... See, I'm all ears. Be me, me. I remember. I, I don't. I don't know if I said it to you. I can't remember because I know I was on Twitter commenting when Todd McShay, McShay came out and said Jalen Carter had off the field character issues, and I was like, "Here, here they go. Here go the white man every year round draft." The Come on, Tasha. They find some dirt on the black player. And say, Come on, Tasha. Get this. Let you, it know, out. you had teammates saying, Well, I ain't had no food. That man gave me his meal plan. Todd McShay, McShay said that there were things that would be released later on. He I broke that story, didn't he? I was, I mean, he didn't say anything because he, I mean, he hadn't had the proof. So again, this goes back to the story that Paul was saying at the beginning of the, of the show where he was drag racing with the young lady. She was in an esca- uh, uh, ex- uh, explorer yeah. and he was in a Jeep and they were drag racing. You see that they showed the, the video from the traffic stop where they were drag right. racing. Right. He goes around, he, they have the wreck. He was there when the wreck happened and he drove off. He didn't stop. He just saw the wreck when they flipped and he kept going. Like they do in Texas. Keep going. Right. So I, when Todd McShay, I, th- I don't think I said anything to you. I think I was just responding to some tweets to people who were tweeting about how they do this to the to the black man. And y'all know I'm always going to bet on black, but sometimes, you know, you bet on black. We set our own selves up, me included. Like I just did with John. Keep going. <laughs> So with this one, I have to shut the hell up to T. Sizzle herself when I was ready to go all in on Todd McShay about his comments with Jalen Carter when he knew what we didn't know. I want you all to earmark this, that Tasha, from this point forward, whoever she tells to shut the hell up, she has cause to do it because she held herself accountable first. So... Any more shut the hell up since she gives after this. Don't go saying the Bible. What about when you said this? She she started with herself. She started with I, and now she's gonna start flaming these fools that 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 get into her crosshairs. Tasha, I respect that. Good job by you. Now we got a busy, busy day of sports ahead of us. So before the people get off to that, who are you shouting out this week? And I'm kind of embarrassed. My child has watched pretty much every old movie that we watched. She knows all the lines. She knows all the jokes. Finish your thought and then come back and answer that. Finish your I'll leave it up there for you, but finish your shout out and then come back and answer. Uh, She knows all the lines, all the quotes to all the classic movies that we watch. She knows how to go back and forth. So my shout out actually goes to my baby daddy. I get a text on my phone and Sasha says, mom, I just saw Boomerang. Then I was like, how the hell you ain't never seen Boomerang? For the first time? Yes, this week. Her and her father watched Boomerang. And what did she do? Instantly just start quoting the lines. I'm sending her stuff, (laughs) videos that I had recorded in 2020 when we were home for pandemic and it happened to be on television. I recorded scenes she started when I started saying stuff. She started saying stuff back after watching a classic the last time. A classic. So shout out to my baby daddy for, for for putting our baby girl on to Boomerang. So now, like I mean, I would say stuff from Boomerang to her. I didn't know she wasn't getting. She was just laughing probably because so she not, so so now she knows what it means to have hammer time in your shoes. Yes, and she no. You know what she told me? Now I know why you always told me to make sure I keep my toes polished. And I do. I said it's either off or on. It's not if it's half. You need to take it all off. <laughs> it's either off or on. Because I was I was like he was like when Martin said you don't f her shoes. He said well, I well know you, you, you got to coordinate. You, you got to coordinate. coordinate. <laughs> The shoes was, I noticed her shoes was a little lumpy. <laughs> right. she, said, no, she said, you didn't marry me for my cooking. <laughs> she makes some earrings. 
<laughs> now let's let's answer Melanie's question because she she really does look to learn from us and, and we do take that seriously. So Tasha, go ahead. He did not bump the car. From my understanding, where the wreck occurred, it was like a curve. Yes, and they were, that's correct. And they were both going around the curve, and maybe yes. she overcorrected. The reason why he's being held liable is because he was, in essence, drag racing with her. So right. the charges are only misdemeanors. They're not felons. Right, right, right. And, I'm, and thank you for pointing that out because I missed that in, in the opening. These are only misdemeanors. He's not going to go do fed time or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, yeah and, thank and, you. And he bumped her car. The, the You know, it probably would have been some felonious charges. But, I mean, and, you know, you kind of have to say, hey, she was in this too. She was... She decided to raise him too. So why would he even be in charge? I think they're getting him on the fact that he was drag racing with her and he left the scene when he right. had the accident. And he lied. Again, what did I say last week? The lie is in the cover up. I you said, did. You've been on the roll lately. So while and she also had another question I forgot to get to earlier while we're still talking about the, the combine and the draft. She keeps hearing the Alabama quarterback is really small. Will that hurt him? I hope not. But, you know, you also have Russell Wilson and you have uh, old Call of Duty out there in Arizona. But Kyler, Russell, yeah. But Russell had some girth to him. And so does Kyler for that, po for that and, part. And they're girthy. Uh, he's rather skinny. I think he's not even 200 pounds. If that man is 175 pounds soaking wet, I'd be shocked. And not even six feet tall. Right. I mean, I mean, His measurables know, are going to be interesting when I mean, they come you also out. Had Drew Brees, who's I mean, Drew, Drew Brees sometimes was jumping to, to throw the ball, and he was you know he was effective. He won the Super Bowl, Hall of Famer too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Good stuff on you. And and anytime y'all got questions, make sure that that you um throw them out to us. And um, he says, and no update on Bama dude. I mean, he was getting patted down in the player introductions. He's he's about to be John Junior. Why are you getting patted down in the introduction? Somebody lost their life, you little oh, idiot. Yeah, shut the hell up to the coach. Well, I don't know what be going on in the player introductions. Shut, Alabama? Yep. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Right. Bryce Young going to drop. Dude's 5'10". That's Call of Duty, too. Can can we can we caveat this with Mike hates Alabama? Can we, can we, can we caveat this? Mike is loving all this Alabama dirt that's Again, going on. I always bet on black, so of course I'm going to root for the kid. Right, right, right. Unlike Ja, you ain't gonna root for him. We gonna, I we gonna. I didn't, I didn't say I wasn't rooting for Ja. I said I want Ja to sit his ass down. And that we do agree on. I want to give a shout out since we were talking about entourages today. I want to give a shout out first off to T Sizzle, Tasha T Sizzle. The, I mean, thirty years of friendship, laughter, football, basketball, uh, state fairs, uh, banging, uh, uh, making beats on the table. Remember the Negro Spade League after school and high school. Like, if tell me get, something good. Tell me something good. We were about that life. If you only get one shot at this life, the if you can surround yourself with people who can fart in front of you, who you can pass gas in front of, who who can see, can open your skeleton closet and just put the bone back in there and say, "Boy, what the hell was you doing?" And just shut it and go on about their day. Then you are a blessed person. I am blessed. I'm sending a shout out to Tasha T. Sizzle, Michael Hasso, Stephanie Denise Coulter, Melanie Taylor, Shamika Nicole. Everybody's in the comments. You are a big part of this show. We do love y'all. I love my crew. They kept me out of trouble. I'm 600 miles away from my biological family, and I fell into the greatest hands of all. Tasha would tell me to sit my ass down like she would tell Ja. She would say, what the hell are you doing? Stop that. You know what I'm saying? Mike would be like, eh, eh. You know, he's a few words. He just goes, he just grunts a lot. Mm. <clears throat> so I want to send a shout out to my crew because they're not going to let me turn into no John Morant, no matter how much money I get or or may get in the future. So shouts out to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we got college basketball that's coming up. The championship, the, the tournament's coming up next week. We'll see if our Michigan Wolverines get in. Until then, you know how we get down. We will see you in six days and 23 hours. Until then, we sorry, Sasha, for being late. Peace. <laughs> Eddie. Well, y'all don't go on the 1108, so I just thought I'd call you. Don't do it like that. That's our sponsor.